You're listening to Linda Pinizzato, and we're having some fantastic condominium conversation on the condo expert. Interesting enough, you know, Errol Lowe, the Inspired Telecom, who provides telephone services to businesses and residential properties and so on. What we've done is we've gotten into a fabulous conversation on condominiums. Absolutely. And, you know, I know that guaranteed there's a ton of condo owners out there that get downright frustrated <laughs> <laughs> when they come to the front door trying to enter into their own building or have friends come. Yes. And, you know, that system is really a bit of a pain. But I think the thing is, is that if you're coming in the door, you know, for with the board of directors on amenities and so on, mm -hmm. and then you're providing the service to the residents in the building, whether they be owners or tenants, right. it would seem to be a no-brainer to bring in that third element of the picture. You would think. It makes sense, and especially in how everything is about integration. It's how do we create a universal platform? You had said the right word, universal. That's what everything is now. It's geared towards how do we make all these devices speak the same language, whether it's in a building, an industrial space, or <laughs> in a car, or on a mobile device, we want to make it so that, and when I say we, I mean technologists, industrialists in the telecom sector, and network engineers, they want to get to the point where everything speaks the same language. Because then, mm -hmm. conversion is no longer an issue. Because now you don't have to ask, well, okay, if I get this, will it work with this that we already have? It'll be, well, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. Or we just have to do this you know, conversion tool, and it's ready to go. Because you notice when you do downloads, there is tons of software online that tells you, okay, we're going to do an upgrade on this software. So now you'll be able to you know, incorporate, let's say, Apple software or Apple mm -hmm. technology into an existing Windows technology. I myself have a computer that's a Mac, but it has what's called boot camp. So it's technical terms, it's partitioned, it's split in two, where I have Apple software on one side and Windows on the other. It's technically is not compatible. But now you have a lot of different softwares that are now integratable, uh, whereas oh, before for, it wasn't. Oh, for sure. Well, you know, it's like people that have to simplify that. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. The layman terms are is that everybody out there, okay, with your iPhones and your iPads, you know when it tells you to upgrade? Yes. Okay, you can sit there and do everybody individual, exactly. or you can just hit that one that says upgrade all. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter what phone you're on. It doesn't have to be Blackberry right. or Android or the, the iPhone. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. Yeah. all one central location but again exactly what you said territorial right because mm -hmm. now it's not about making it easier for the end user it's about how do we make sure we capitalize on the property that we develop to make it only <laughs> able to be accessed by our clients or our right. customers right? right so right. you're correct in that this actually does transfer over to condo owners because it's not about them and what will make it easier for them it's about what we want to do to keep it proprietary to us. And that's exactly, I think, where your point is going. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, so that way at least people, you know, I think the whole idea around the technology is, you know, saving money, mm -hmm. saving Absolutely. time, Absolutely. and less aggravation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And to some degree allow things to interchange and work with one another in Agreed. a layman front Agreed. Because, you know, sometimes people are so busy doing things, it's really hard for them to update themselves constantly on everything. Agreed. Agreed. Unless, of course, they're in the IT world. <laughs> very you <know>? true. <laughs> but you're right. It's very true. What you're saying, right. you're exactly right. What you want is to have a device or a type of service where you don't have to think about it. When you need it, it's there. And when you need to do something with it, it's there. And the instructions and the steps to get it done, very simple. Because who has time to try and figure out rocket science of all this stuff? No one has the time or the inclination to do so. So I see what you're saying. <laughs> well, this is it. I mean, nowadays, you can't even buy. I, it doesn't matter what you buy nowadays. If you're trying to look in the box for the manual, <laughs> it'll tell you to go to a website. Go to a website. <laughs> and go to a website. You know, we're trying to save the paper, too. So <laughs> just so go to the white website and download, download it. Download the PDF. Download the PDF. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, so it comes all along the same lines. That's that's right? true. That's yeah, so true. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, I think one of the key things that property managers, you know, they tend to be the ones at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So when they're out there researching, or if and when they're out there, if they are researching different mm -hmm. information or different initiatives, mm -hmm. it sounds almost like in the condo world, people like yourself and your part, you know, the people involved with your company would actually have to start knocking on doors of the condominiums because I'm not really sure how much property management 
property managers stay on top of updating technology. And I know they stay on top. I mean, there's no question they stay on top of service-related trades. In other words, cleaners, like the no-brainers. Yeah, Yeah. the day-to-day stuff. Yeah, the day-to-day stuff. So I don't think that they put the technology side at the important forefront that it actually needs to be. I would agree. I would agree. And this is a similar case with a lot of different companies in different industries. Most people are, I want to say afraid, but let's say nervous with technology. They're not familiar with something. And it's just, it's it's a human condition, right? If you're not familiar with something, you tend to kind of shy away from it and stick to what you know. And you don't want it to mess up what you have. Exactly. So that's the afraid part. You're okay with the afraid. Okay. Okay. I can get away with that one. All right. Excellent. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. You can get away with that. It's okay. They are, I'm terrified (laughs) to hit a button on my computer sometimes. (laughs) You don't want it to explode. If I've done something. Yes. Oh yeah. No, no, no. If I'm on the phone and I'm in the middle of doing a big, huge, something really super important. Right. Okay. And I've answered the phone and the person starts talking to me, they better wait. I got to, <laughs> I got to press save. I'm terrified to lose what I just finished doing. Right. So I it's, totally we're understand. All good. I totally understand. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to. Cause it, even in, in my world, when I try to explain the technology and I try to keep it as simplistic as possible and people are nervous because they're afraid, okay, I don't really understand the technology. Like, I understand sort of what you're saying about the benefits, but I don't want to disrupt what I already have in place. So as long as it's working and that's what, and and the old adage comes into play, if it ain't broke, why fix it? But again, like I said before, the legacy way of thinking, the older thinking doesn't cut it anymore because you can't think of let's keep things the way they are. Status quo is no longer going to work. Oh, no, you're right. I All think right. it's those people that get their computer crashing. <laughs> you know, it's working. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with <laughs> it. it doesn't work. You know, like, uh, well, exactly. I mean, Derek Thomas of IT May Day, he mm. does our internet, like our websites for Co-Ontario and does All a right. tremendous job and it's so much work. Mm-hmm. And I can't believe how many times uh, the comment comes back. Well, I don't know. My computer's working fine. It's perfectly fine. Well, you really need to upgrade it and you really need to back it up. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, but it's working good. No, but seriously, back it up and, you know, let's start looking at something different yes. no no it's fine until the next phone call oh my god <laughs> help <laughs> computer crash help, computer crash what 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 do you mean you can't find it what exactly. a blue screen yes. oh no <laughs> so you're absolutely right yeah like preventative we, maintenance preventative maintenance yeah, preventative yeah. forethought right that's right so i agree that i don't want us to think that i don't want to put too much on the property managers or think that they're not doing a great job they are it's just that looking out for the the goodwill and for the support of the residents in the buildings, technology is forcing you to start to acknowledge it, that this is now has to be, it has to be something that has to be part of your whole routine of, okay, how do we maintain the upkeep, not just the day to day, but the next year, the next two years, the next three years, because existing technology is getting old and probably becoming obsolete. And becoming more expensive because as they get older, they start to break down, which means you've got to bring someone out to fix it. And then guess what? As that old technology gets older and older, the parts become more expensive, just like an older car. It works the exact same way. So now to fix an old system that is not even worth the value of what it used to be, you know, five, 10 years ago, it's more expensive. So in other words, if you had an old, old car from the 70s, the parts are going to be more than if you were to buy a Bentley. No, you're 100% right. right. Yeah, yeah. The, the older it gets, the worse it is. Yeah, the more expensive it gets, yeah, but the, the more often it's going to break down because right. the parts are still old. So now it's time to really start looking forward to look at the new technology. But in the meantime, you're now dangerously close to having a computer crash. Well, exactly. To put it in simple terms, right? And then you have the Derricks <laughs> yeah. saying, okay, we told you about this three, four, five years ago, that this would inevitably happen. And if you had taken steps earlier on... Mm-hmm. And maybe in smaller steps, we're not, we're not saying we do the whole thing all at once because that could be cost prohibitive, but in small bite-sized chunks. As, again, the old adage, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, you know? So <laughs> it could seem monumental at first, and in some cases it is. But in any large project, you always have to break it down to small, manageable units. Let's do this first, and this will have a cascade effect. So step one starts. Step two starts, and then it continues down the line. And eventually, over the next few years, oh, wow, we did it. It's done. And by the time that upgrade has been finished, you're now on a platform that's upgradable without needing physical maintenance. And that's where the IP technology takes over because now you don't need physical. Well, you do up to a point, but not nearly to the labor-intensive requirements of the legacy systems that's in place. So to your point, absolutely, the type of things that we'd be looking to do, and not just Mm -hmm. our company, but all technology companies regardless, is 
moving forward with IP technology to help the yeah. buildings and, and industries that are out there to realize that we can cut overhead considerably and also put ourselves in a position where any upgrades and new technology comes down the pipe, you know what? Not a problem. It can be integrated because it already has a platform that's universal. So oh, yeah, absolutely. you have a good point. And the property managers, you're right, need to start consulting to look at that. Well, it, it's out of the realm of the normal concern. Mm -hmm. Yet the interesting part about it, I mean, the three needs in today's lives, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a need. Yes, it <laughs> it's is. It's no longer it a want. Yes. I mean, yes. we need communication. Absolutely. I mean, people don't even find each other. They don't even meet each other in person anymore. <laughs> They're meeting each other online. Yes, so they I mean, need communication. Yes, so absolutely. They need communication. They that need IT in their lives. Absolutely. You know, computers and so on and so on. Because it is a part of our lives. It's all like part it of their life. Yeah. yeah. It's integrated. It's, yeah. it's integrated. And, you know, certainly safety and access control and yep. proper access control. True. You know, so you take all those those, those three elements, I mean, they're at the forefront. They have to be addressed. They have to be. And I think, you know? again, we go back to a bit of the fear. That has to be looked at as to what is the fear from. If it's just fear of I don't understand it, then that tells us, okay, there's a need, as you mentioned, right. to educate the folks out there and say, okay, you know what? It's not that complex as you may imagine it to be. Everything is complicated if you don't know it. Well, but exactly. when you start asking the questions and then you start getting taught how it works and all of a sudden, oh, that's not so bad. Because mm -hmm. most of it is based on older type of concepts anyway. So it's something where if we find that people are balking at moving forward, property managers, developers or whatnot, or even the board, because well, we're not really familiar with this technology. Well, then the first step is saying, I don't know. Education, learn. Correct. And the second yeah. step is, okay, we, yep. need to, we need to talk to someone to teach us what we need to know and then tie that into the benefits of what we're looking for. So the first question is, how is this going to help our people first and foremost? And how is this going to help us in the long run? Mm -hmm. And that's where the education starts to come in. And then you can start to work together say, okay, let's customize something for you specifically or for the board specifically or for this area, whatever it may be. But you're right. Dialogue has to take place first. Well, this is it. And, and you know, I mean, communication is so, and I had to put that as number one because, I mean, that was the foundation of when I started COA mm -hmm. is to create communication of education communication. Awareness is key. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, and if you've got the awareness, then you can control the governance, the accountability. Absolutely. Because you start asking questions. Because now you ask what questions. What is this? And you don't have the fear and, yes, you know, intimidation. Yes, yeah. Yes. You're not you start asking, what is this? Right. Okay. Yeah. Explain to me how this is going to work. And now I see the impacts to us, like, right? Yeah. Short term or long term. And this is where real dialogue begins to happen because now we're forcing the powers that be to be answerable. That's right. And dialogue creates trust. Absolutely. Because it forces answers. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so it's important. And, and that's all the way through in life. doesn't matter what it is. That is true. You know, so you're listening to uh, Linda Pinizzato and Errol Lowe of Inspired Telecom here at Bayshore Health Community and Wellbeing Station, powered by the Hayes FM. We'll be right back. <laughs> 